Today I'm coming at you live from my 2023 HQ19 caravan or trailer or travel trailer depending on where you're from. The reason we're in here is because that's where my 3D scanning journey started. The idea was I need to put a composting toilet in here to replace my water flushing toilet and so I thought to myself wait I'm gonna need a platform. So for that platform I'm gonna to need to cut it out of wood because that seems the most basic thing to do. But then I, after I cut it out of wood, I said to myself, you know what? What if I 3D printed this so it actually matches the toilet that's going in there? OGO, OGO, I guess is the name of the brand and that's that box that's behind me. But I thought if I could just print one out in plastic, it would actually match and it would actually look good, right? Like it belongs there. And so I got into this journey for 3D scanning. So if you're watching this and you just want to get to the bottom of it, the bottom of it is, I don't think that 3D scanners are ready for prime time. For that user that's just picking one up and wants to scan something real quick, I honestly don't think they're ready for that. If you're a tinkerer, the kind of person that wants to go out there and mess around with it, play with it, they're ready for that. And that's what this video is about. So if that's enough information for you, peace. <laughs> But for those of you who are like, okay, what is this crazy person talking about? I've seen people 3D scan stuff. It's obviously ready to go. He doesn't know what he's talking about. That's what we're going to get into in this video. All right. So where do we begin? My background is in IT. So I'm not just one of those people that just has no clue about IT. So I'm just here ranting and raving about products because I just hate IT. Not at all. I've got an IT background. I've got high degrees in IT. So it's, it's my field. So I kind of know a couple of things about IT. So this is how, and this is how this journey started. I figured, you know what? I can buy a 3D scanner. I can scan what I want and then print it out and then I'd be good to go. So I set out on this journey. I did the usual stuff. You go on YouTube, you find all those videos of people that are scanning things. They're scanning whole cars. They're scanning in the dark. They're scanning in the light and things seem to just be working out. So I was like, you know what? This sounds like this technology is at the point where the average consumer can now use it. So I decided to buy one. And so I did I did my research. I found the Iron Star, which is supposed to be it's the more it, the Iron Star is a little bit more expensive and I'll do um, a quick little video on each one as well. But the Iron Star is a little bit more expensive. So I figured, you know what, for my lack of knowledge and skill and everything else that goes along with that, let me at least buy one of the more expensive ones because that's going to be a little bit more ready for market, I guess. The Einstar Shining 3D was my option for that. So let's take a look at that and see some of the things going through that device, what I thought was challenging and what I liked about it. All right, so this mess right here is uh, it's the Einstar Shining 3D, right? Um, nice looking device, very it looks official like and when you're holding it it's got some some feeling to it it doesn't feel cheap at all it feels like you've got something substantial in your hands right so love the way it feels and the way it looks it looks like you're going to be able to scan some things right um right out of the box getting it out it comes with this little pad here that you're just supposed to you're supposed to use it to calibrate it right you kind of scan it first it's uh up and down like so and then you go sideways at a 45 degree angle and you kind of scan out, then you do the other way and it kind of uh, configures itself. So just straight out of the box, just very interesting that you have to do all that kind of nonsense, I feel like, um, maybe not nonsense, but still just a whole lot more work than what you would think you would have to do to get it started. All right, we'll put that to the side. And then the device itself, like I said, it looks cool. But when you start thinking about it and you start using it, it's actually pretty heavy. I don't know exactly how many pounds, but it's got some weight to it. So you feel like when you're scanning, you're holding it up for so long and trying to be so intricate as you're scanning an object that it ends up feeling not very ergonomic at all. Number one, you can't really hold it very well. Like it's almost like it should have had some kind of sleeve or something like that in it right imagine holding an ipad and trying to type on it at the same time it's it seems like a good idea but it's like when you start using it it's like eh, this is cute on tv when they're doing it but in real life you would actually have a pretty challenging time trying to do that every single day um so that was my problem with the ergonomics on this nice looking device and it's got this so you can at least 
put your hand through it so it doesn't fall while you're scanning, fortunately, because you know you could drop it after it gets so heavy. But that's the Einstar Shining 3D. This was the most, I can't get it out. So that's the Einstar, and those are my impressions of it, pulling it out of the box and trying to use it. Not very, it doesn't, it's not that good. I just feel like the scanning, the 3D scanning is not where it's supposed to be. One day it's going to get there. The devices are going to get better. Heck, they're going to be smaller than this, and some are already smaller than this. But it's, and you'll see people out here on YouTube scanning with these things, scanning a whole car and going through all, and going through all that, right? So it's definitely possible, and people are doing it, but it's not that easy. You're not going to just pull it out of the box and... Uh, start scanning. There's a learning curve. There's the sprays. There's the targeting things, but it's just more painful to me than it is actually worthwhile to actually do in my perspective. But I'm also not desperate, right? I'm just a guy who was looking for something super fast, get it out of the box, uh, scan something real quick and put it away, right? But this has a learning curve to it and yeah, just not where it's supposed to be at this moment. One day they'll be better. Today is not that day. Oh, and another thing about this, it only works with Windows. Everybody knows, well, not everybody, but a lot of a lot of the market these days when it comes to photos, editing, video, and all that kind of stuff, everybody always reaches for a Mac. So getting a device like this, you'd naturally assume, oh yeah, it's gonna work with a Mac. Guess what? It does not. It's all Windows only and a gaming computer at that. So not just like a typical old Windows computer, it's gotta be the best of the best. So it's 16 gigs of RAM on a dedicated card, right? So you've gotta have an NVIDIA card of some sort in your computer and an i7 processor. So your typical gaming computer in order to use this. So yeah, not okay. So one day these scanners will be better, right? But today is just not that day. And I'm not trying to knock Shining 3D. It's like the first computer that ever came out. If you got it and you used it, you'd be like, yeah, yeah, I'm using a computer. And you're impressed because you're on a computer. But then you fast forward a few years and you got the computers we got today. And it's like, oh, wow, that was the computer back then. You know, you guys that are older remember the floppy disks, the hard disks, that, all that kind of stuff, right? You did it because you had to. But it wasn't, it wasn't top notch. Even back then, you realized that you're like, what? There's not enough memory on this. There's not enough this. Or you're downloading pictures from the internet. If you remember dial-up modems, right? You're like, oh, this is taking forever. You know, if it's like looking up a poster or something, a celebrity, and then you know, you start off with their hair, and then it kind of just goes slowly, and you're just waiting there for five minutes as it renders the whole image until you finally get some eyes and then a nose, that kind of thing. And I feel like 3D scanning is at that point right now. So um, that's the Shining 3D. Let's see what else we have here. Um, this here is the cable that comes with it. Um, so this is like a normal type PC connection over here, but then this whole mess of cables right here goes along with it including this part here where it plugs in here to power it and then that goes on to a USB and goes into the computer so it's not even type C USB it's like the old style type A USB which is pretty interesting for a device that's calling for a gaming laptop you would think that they'd still they'd at least be on point with you know type C so you've got at least faster processing on that right but nope this is what it has in it um, everything else though very nice box that it comes in you know um, everything is packaged really everything is packaged really really well um, this is actually pretty cool all right so that's the Einstar and we're gonna move on to the next one so the second device that I got was the Creality Creality I believe is uh, the big in the printing world, I believe. And so I thought, you know what, big company. And I watched some videos, people had some success printing with that device. And so I decided to myself, let me get one of these devices. Maybe this is better than just the super expensive Shining 3D. And uh, maybe this will get me what I need. And so I got one of those. Um, I'm using that device, same kind of problems where the tracking and all those kinds of things just ex aren't exactly where, where you want them to be. Let's take a look at that device and see exactly some of the little ins and outs on it. 
All right. The next guy we have here is a uh, Creality. Now I think Creality is big in the printer industry, so they decided to give their oh I think anyways they decided to give 3D scanners a uh, go at it and. All right, so this has got a cable here, at least type C into the camera, and then uh, uh, type A into power, I believe, and then uh, type C into your phone. And this is all fine and dandy, but guess what that uh, means you cannot use? That's right, an iPhone, because they don't have type C, they still have that lightning cable, right? Uh, except maybe for the iPhone 15 when that comes out, but the 14 right now still has that lightning connector on it. So this has to be an Android phone. Uh, so this has to be an Android device. So right there to me, out of the box, that's not okay, right? Um, let's see. So the scanner itself, a very cool idea. It comes with a little tripod, so that's kind of nice, like so. It's got this cradle right here for your phone, so you can plug in your phone right there so you can see what you're actually scanning, right? So you scan on this side, your phone is set up right here, and you can actually see what you're scanning. You can scan directly onto your phone or you can scan it onto a computer. I tried it both ways, and honestly, still not exactly where it's supposed to be. Now, this is not supposed to be some full on, some full on, um, video on 3d scanning and the intricacies and the in and outs this is just a video from a consumer like hey if you're trying to do this just beware that it may not be what you think it is you may have to sit down there crack a book open learn something get some sprays get some targeting things you really have to be into it to try to scan this here i don't think i don't know i don't remember now if this was this or the other one but the software was way better than the software on the iron star so the software on this or the of which i think it was the revo i think that had the best software these ones here the software just wasn't good again the scanning with this still pretty difficult i just not successful at all either it loses tracking or it's too dark or the surface has not enough angles but all those same same kinds of problems with this and then as well you've got the same problem with the cables right this cable here, you're trying to maintain a cable while you're trying to scan at the same time. It's kind of difficult, but that is the that is the struggle of 3D scanning. Um, so not fun times trying to maintain that, making sure the cable doesn't get in your shot, and uh, while still trying to watch it to make sure it's scanning what you think it's scanning. Uh, the things that I tried to scan, none of them ever turned green. It, it, if it did, it turned green for a little bit, and then it lost tracking. Then I couldn't find my tracking back in the right spot, so it was all all very interesting. This is like a shoe just from a camera, or whatever, cold shoe from a camera. And this guy just slides out like so. All right, And this also detaches. And if you didn't need to use a phone and you were plugged in directly to a computer, you could just set it up like that. Like so. All right. But very good construction. It doesn't feel cheap at all. Neither, neither does the stand. Everything feels real high quality. And uh, same thing with the case that it comes in. You know, if this was any indication whatsoever of how well it's scanned, it would be a very good scanner. But um, unfortunately, no winner here so that did not work for me so after that failed i decided i would step up to another device and this one is kind of in between the creality and uh the shining 3d price wise right it was about 899 dollars and the beauty of this is that it came with a little turntable so it was like okay some of the problems i'm having maybe i'm just not steady enough and i need something that's just sitting there and will help me scan. So I got this Revo Point, um, I, the name is escaping me right now, I put it in the bottom here, but I got this Revo, I'll just call it Revo from now on, but I got this Revo uh, device. And again, still a challenging device, and let me just show you a couple of things about it. All right, the last thing that I played around with was this guy right here, and this is, a Revo point or Revo point or whatever you want to call that but again very well packaged and the device itself 
very well made, I say, like good construction. It's nice. It's hefty. It feels good. You feel like you're going to scan the heck out of something. It also comes with a tripod, which is kind of nice, right? Same kind of mounting system right there where it kind of slips into that like so. And then it, you know, it sits on there. So the beauty of this and why I thought I actually got this last. The beauty of it and why I thought maybe this might be it is because it comes with a turntable, right? This guy right here. And it's all powered or battery powered or rechargeable battery. I, I don't know, but it was on. It was good to go from the get go. Or maybe I plugged it into my computer. I don't remember. But anyways, you set whatever you want on the turntable, right? And you put the scanner there and it's supposed to scan it, right? some kind of fashion like this so imagine your subject or object rotating on this little bed but the bed is really really small it's really tiny so this is the size of the camera and this is the size of my hand so that kind of just tells you exactly how big that is and here's the size of a regular iphone not even an iphone pro or max or whatever it's an iphone pro but not a max all right so that's how small that is so it's not a lot of real estate at all and if you want to scan something bigger it's obviously problematic right but uh still i liked this idea because i thought you know what i'm having so many issues trying to maintain tracking if i've got something like this and this rotating instead of you trying to rotate the camera around the object that would eliminate all your problems you would think but it didn't do it for me, right? It was still some tracking issues, this and that, this and that. And this also comes with a package here that says, you you know, it's a, like a, not a targeting, but it's a, a calibration pad of some sort. And I didn't go into the manual and get all, you know, legit with it and try to read through it all to see if I can get it all right. I did not do that. If you did that, maybe you would figure this out and you would scan this and then it would print the best it's ever printed. I have no idea. But all I'm saying is that a stubborn guy like myself who says, oh, I'm in IT, I should be able to pull it out of the box and just scan. I wasn't able to scan. And the scanner itself never came up and said, hey, I need to be calibrated. The Einstar at least came out of the box and says, you've got to calibrate it first. This did not. So. My issue with this, same kind of situation, right? Where the scanning is just horrible. It's missing the scan. It can't do things without contours. It needs the targeting um, tabs. It needs the spray or something like that. But just not out of the box, pull it out, get to scanning kind of situation. Not at all like that. So once again, not consumer ready. Uh, nice gimmicky little thing um, for tinkerers perhaps but not for the guy that just really wants to scan some things and be out. Not ready for that. Um, the box comes with a bunch of different connections in it. Um, just different cables for different situations, but I believe it's, once again, it's all Android stuff, right? No real Apple stuff in here. It doesn't look like it, but I didn't try honestly to plug this into my phone either, but you've got a USB-A, C to A adapter, um, but yeah. That's about it, and I think some targeting strips in here, or tabs, or circles, or whatever you want to call them. But uh, that's that in there. And this one actually comes with a little guy right here, and you're supposed to be able to scan that guy. So I did put the guy on the, on the little surface here, and I scanned him, and it worked. Um, but then when I tried to flip him over so I could get the bottom or the top, it kind of got funny a couple of times. I think I've got video and I'll stream it here in the top. All right, so now we've got the bust set up and it's in the good. So I've pushed it forward a little bit so it's not so close to the scanner. And we're gonna hit play and see what happens. So these should be easier, I'd like to think, because number one, that's what they send you in the box. So I'm sure it's got the perfect color, the perfect contours and everything else so it does scan it perfectly and as you can see it's not struggling at all picking up this little bust guy right here yeah no reds whatsoever everything just kind of rotates and gets captured really nice all right so we'll complete this
and let's check out what has happened. He's got a little spot on the top of his head there where it didn't capture him. At this point, I wonder if I could lay him down and scan it again to kind of capture some of those other places. So let's resume. start so it does capture that it is laying down now and it's going to scan the rest of it so that's pretty cool this is the best software by far i think compared to anything that i've tried so far i mean just being able to pause that complete it look at it flip it around lay it on its side and still being able to continue and have it pick up the tracking that's actually pretty cool so that is kind of awesome I'm gonna pause it again, move it out a little bit, because it looks like it's scanning. Start it over again. Just in this image right here, it looked like when it rotated part of the way it was obscured or too close to the camera. So now it's just right. So it is turning a deeper shade of green as opposed to that other color that it was showing before. So I think this tells us that we are doing a whole lot better. So we're gonna pause it again. Now that I got the bottom and probably under his chin and the top of his head where we had those holes. Okay, so pause that, stand him up again. it see if it picks up the tracking that's really cool the way it's just able to pick up the tracking like that all right we do have a bunch of that extra material right there but overall I think this is pretty good complete this And that's all filled in now. No hole on top of his head. No hole at the bottom. Yeah. Fairly good enough bust right there. It did scan this somewhat successfully. Um, but um, yeah, anything else that I tried to scan was a little bit more difficult. Than the software is the best out of the ones I've tested so far. I think it's uh, pretty clean, it's intuitive, it doesn't look like an afterthought, so the software runs pretty good, I'd say. Um, I like the fact that it's got the pause button on it, so you can pause the scan and then continue again. So I just have this salt shaker right here, which is something I've been trying to scan, just, well, it's a pepper shaker, but just for kicks, just to see what would happen with that. And the first time I scanned it, I scanned it upright, and and then I paused it, I laid it back down, it was able to track it just fine and uh, continue the scan. The scan wasn't horrible at the end, but now you can see I've stood it up and it has two images now, one of it laying down and one going across. So I'm going to stop this or cancel it and then I'm going to start over again. So as you can see, we're in the good section right there. I like it in the good because it's far enough that I can lay it down without moving it in and out. So I'm gonna start the scan right now. So I'll just hit start right there. And then it's gonna start scanning. So you can see it kind of going through. It already has another kind of shadow in there. I'm not sure what that is that it's already kind of done in there. So we're going to cancel this. All right. And uh, 
do a completely new scan once again. So we'll do start. All right, so it's capturing that and having a little trouble with that part for one reason or the other. And now it's starting to kind of get confused. And it's all just starting to get messed up. You can see that. And maybe it's because it's far away and in the good section. If I move it a little bit closer, maybe it'll capture it a little better. So we're gonna stop this and we'll move it a little closer. All right, so cancel that. Move that a little bit so it gets to the excellent section. All right, so it's now an excellent over there, but it's now, you know, pretty close to this and close enough in here, you can see that you're gonna have to move it out to capture the whole image, right? So we'll go ahead and start the scan. So it's doing a way better job. Or did I just speak too soon? No, it's still going good. So doing a pretty good job capturing that. And this is just a salt shaker, so not a lot of um, geometry to it, not a whole lot. It still has a fair amount of, it's got some angles in it, right? But you can see that it's doing okay. It's not the best by any stretch of the imagination. You would expect it, number one, it's stable, right? It's sitting on their own little rotating platform right there right there, so you'd expect it to be running a whole lot smoother. If it doesn't do it smooth now, when is it gonna do it? When you're holding it in your hand? So you can already see it's starting to do some crazy things here, and yeah, so that's kinda jacked up. And even this did not come out perfect, right? Um, just overall not impressed with 3d scanners yet one day they'll be good and i'm going to come up in here and i'm going to say hey guys 3d scanners are ready right now they're not ready yet all this stuff is all more gimmicks than it is you know something that you can actually get in there be proud of and start scanning things and putting them on etsy and rocking and rolling we're not there yet all right so let's put that to the side And we'll look at all the scanners together. So that's the Revo, the Creality. All right. I don't think this will stand like this, will it? No, it just wants to fall on its face. And then the daddy of them all, is, <laughs> as far as size is concerned anyway, the Shining 3D. So this is the devices and this is their sizes. And hopefully this is somewhat helpful to you guys. So the bottom line with all these devices at the end of the day for me was, okay, if you're a tinkerer and that you're the kind of person that wants to go out there and really you're passionate about 3D scanning, you want to discover everything about it, you want to be on the cutting edge, these devices are ready for that, right? Um, if you're the consumer, or the, your average consumer, you want to buy something, you want to take it out of the box, and you want to get to scanning something, these devices are not ready for that kind of thing. There's some configurations that need to happen on some of them, like the Shining 3D. Um, there's uh, lighting conditions that you have to consider. There's having a steady hand. There's extra things like that. Uh, Shining 3D, for example, needed a gaming computer, right? It needed an i7 processor a 16 gigabyte dedicated video graphics card, right? Like an NVIDIA or something like that. So it's not your average computer. It's a legitimate gaming computer. That's what you would need to process these. The other two didn't need anything like that. As a matter of fact, you could use your phone and just plug in your phone and that would work for that. So that's kind of nice. But for something like a Shining 3D, it needed a gaming computer and those are gonna run you about $1,400. So you've got the X amount over a thousand, maybe even 1,400 or close to 2,000, I'll put that in the bottom here, for the scanner itself. 
and then $1,400 for the computer, you're in it for a lot of money. So when you pick up a device like that, you want to get it out of the box and you want to start swiping around and scanning things, but not the experience at all that you're getting from that. And then coupled with that, the software in most of these, I think except for the Revo, is not ready for prime time. The software is just not what you want it to be. It's It seems like an afterthought. It's not well laid out just not there yet. I'm not saying don't go out there and don't buy these devices, but I'm saying do not look at these videos where you see people scanning whole cars with some of these devices and you think you're gonna pull it out of the box and do that. I don't think that the technology is there yet. I even let a couple of people use some of these devices. I was like, maybe this is just me. I gave it to a fellow IT person. I'm like, hey, check it out. Try to use this device. And it's the same kind of comments, right? Set your expectations when you're getting these devices that it may not be what you think it is. It's definitely not pull it out of the box and start scanning. There's going to be a slight learning curve and you may not get the results that you think you're going to get. Personally, I think for this project that I'm doing right now, I may have to create an actual 3D render myself that may end up being easier, believe it or not, or take that into a place to have it scanned. So computers used to be like that, right? Computers used to be um, so complicated and not even that long ago you had to have a computer operator. That was a legitimate job. So you took whatever you wanted to be computed to a guy that, you know, probably had a tie and a pocket protector or whatever quintessential IT guy things that come into your head, right? And they're the ones that would actually get stuff like that done. 3D scanning, I'm feeling like, is at that point right now where you need a professional to do it. You don't just do it yourself, right? And um, one day it's gonna get to where we need it to be, Right now, it's just not there yet. Peace.